For this video series and accompanying magazine article, a still photographer and I followed Kai through his daily routine for several days to show as much as possible what life is like, not only for the professional bodybuilder at the top of his game, but also for the beginner, the amateur, and frankly, for anyone who wants to succeed in transforming their body and pushing it beyond its natural limits. In the beginning, and over the years, I never spent a tremendous amount of time sorting out minutia details like sodium. Those are details that come later on. Those star moments that fill the highlight reels and you know, leave an audience in awe to watch. Those seconds are built on thousands and thousands and thousands of hours that a lot of people wouldn't think are worth adding to a highlight reel. This is a day in the life of a bodybuilder. Hey, what's your day like? It's not very interesting when you consider he's on a piece of cardio equipment for two hours a day. He spends another hour or two cooking. You know, he packed his food another two hours in commute to and from the gym. Well, damn, if you train twice a day or three, how does that start to look? A lot of times, these the day in the life of opportunities bring a lot of anxiety for me because there's a lot of this expectation a lot of times of, well, you're supposed to be this accomplished, celebrated bodybuilder, and, you know, why don't you have what Jay has? Why don't you, you know, live like Phil Heath does? Why, why you wear a hoodie all the fucking time, you know? What's that thing on your face? You know, where, 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 you know, where are you from? You know, and then in order to try to explain that, you almost end up looking like you're coming from another planet. Kai Green is unique among today's stars of bodybuilding. He rejects the usual trappings of success and prefers to live simply, still living and working in the downtrodden Brooklyn neighborhood he has known for most of his life. When Flex Magazine proposed this Day in the Life video series, Kai was adamant about not concentrating on the flash and rewards of the sport, which can be elusive and few for most, but rather on the daily existence that got him to this place. If the world only got a chance to see you on stage receiving top honors before they get a chance to see this or you sleeping on someone's couch just scraping pennies together so you could afford to train six hours a day, some bouncing gig or some stripping hustle or something like that, it becomes very difficult to really understand the, the moment of triumph when it comes. In these videos, you won't be seeing any fancy sports cars or marbling chrome kitchens. No personal deep tissue masseuse or highly paid nutritionist. Instead, you will see what has been a day in the life for Kai Green for 20 years, and to a certain extent still is. And it all starts here, in a rundown dollar store on Flatbush Avenue. A critical tool getting ahead in this game of preparation is Tupperware. It is critical to get up in the morning early or go to bed a little bit later at night and cook your food and pack it. A lot of bodybuilders go off track right here. So what I'm going to do today is show you this is how it's done. So you get yourself some technical. It doesn't have to be really flashy. Even though Kai's success has enabled him to move into a townhouse in a nicer area nearby, he instead takes us back to the apartment and the projects that he still keeps. Strewn with the remnants of the recent move and cluttered with his artwork and bodybuilding mementos, this was Kai's home base for many years as he struggled to survive. First thing I would do for years 
should be get up in the morning and follow some basic disciplines that just end up becoming a habit. And as a result of becoming a habit, you end up feeling like your day isn't complete without doing these things. In the beginning and over the years, I never spent a tremendous amount of time sorting out minutia details like sodium. Those are the details that come later on. Is it 10 grams of protein more or 10 grams of protein less? Who cares, just get started. I can take a bag of a frozen vegetable. It can be string beans, broccoli. Throw it in the microwave. As Kai expounds on the fundamentals of bodybuilding, the temperature in that cramped kitchen keeps rising and rising. By my estimate, after 20 minutes, it's at least 120 degrees in there. I, in my light t-shirt, am soon drenched in sweat, yet Kai in his hoodie and knit cap seems unfazed by the sauna. I have to ask why you're running the other burners at the same time, just to do some water today, water weight. I'm very comfortable in a very warm, very warm environment. I used to be in here doing cardio with the oven on, my sweet potatoes cooking, all the burners on the stove on, place so hot, I think the devil was sitting over there talking to you. Like, do you really wanna do this cardio? Sweat just pouring. The audience would never see that. They'll see you on stage the day of the competition though, and see you, you know, receiving top honors and then say, I wanna do that. I want to be that guy. And that's why I, I think it's so important to show this like this, because when I grew up in the, and I grew up and I looked at the magazines and I saw this stuff, I saw the, cele the celebrated athletes of the day with the big contracts. And I saw that. I saw them in these nice kitchens, you know, able to cook each meal fresh, you know, in their more comfortable, and relaxed, calm, kind of explain these things to the camera. And I grew up thinking that that, that, that picture was, was, was the picture. And I always wanted that picture. But I recognize that now, being on the other side of that, wow, you know, this is the work, though, that will produce the desired end result. It's... You know, being able to climb in the trenches now when it's not convenient, it's not comfortable, when the kitchen isn't very beautiful yet, you know. Um, but recognizing that it's very, very important to get these meals and have them with you. Once you cook these meals and you pack them up, now when you leave the house, you have now eliminated the possibility of being stuck without your meal and having to go two, three, four, six hours before eating again. There's a certain amount of work that we really do have to take on ourselves and not expect for someone to do for you. The best coaches, the best supplement company like Muscle Meds, the best product you can ever have available to you will be of little resource to you if you're not able to do what work is required of you when it's time to do it. All right, yeah. Sprinkle some broccoli in here. Three ounces there. Only takes about two or three minutes in the microwave. Your, 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 your cold vegetables, you know, they can be string beans, they can be asparagus, broccoli. I can put another four ounces of chicken breast in here. With this, I can add a half of sweet potato. Sweet potato I can have in either in the oven now, bacon, or I can have in my microwave for nine minutes. I can put four sweet potato in the, in the microwave. Give them nine minutes, depending on how big they are, but we don't have to get lost in minutia. Real life, real, you know, in the trenches bodybuilding means that you have to be inventive. You have to be a, a problem solver. You have to be able to troubleshoot, you know, 
because at the end of the day, it's your responsibility to stay on, on target with your goal. Your goals, your dreams are important to you. Your mother may love you, but she doesn't care whether or not your arms are 24 inches. She's still going to love you. <laughs> well, maybe most moms, but, you know. But your dream of having your arms 20, over 20 inches is your dream. So it's up to you to cultivate that, to protect it, to nurture it. So it's your responsibility to come up with ways to find out how you can eat every two and a half hours without incident. You know, all the beginners, all the real, you know, fledgling amateurs that have grand, grand expectations of where they'd like to go in the sport, man, you gotta develop your tools. You gotta develop the use and awareness of your, of your instrument. You gotta develop these skills. Here, I'm not talking about focusing on how many grams of protein as much as I'm, or how many grams of carbs or how, many grams, what I'm, or how many grams of fat. What I'm focusing on here, though, is the development of character, which comes, which speaks to your ability to follow through and start to string together days of efficient action on a very basic level in order to be able to have your food with you every day, all day, so you are able to eat on time. It keeps you and allows you to stay in an anabolic state. Now, now you start talking about the things that scientifically can, be, can support cellular growth and muscle, muscle repair. But if you are still working without the strength of character yet, without the ability to follow through, then all that complex conversation about those sciences will mean very, very little, will mean nothing to you if you still are not able to get up, cook your meals, pack them, have them with you, and follow through with eating them every two and a half to three hours. And it was these tools that allowed me to turn around and be ready when the next level of my help came. When when the next mentorship that would come along and say, hey, look, wow, you know, you've got some real talent. I want to invest in you. I want to put some time in, in helping you cultivate your stuff. They didn't come because you were just walking around aimlessly looking for someone to help you. This work you got to do on your own, and you've got to be willing to, to bust your ass and get it done. Not have the excuses about, well, I can't because um, I don't know how to cook. Or I can't because I don't. I'm not a nutritionist. I gotta. I gotta work. Wait till I can save up money to pay a nutritionist, and then I'll turn pro. No, you do the things that you can do to the best of your ability. But I'm just saying this: if you got big dreams, and you want to do something really big, something that's going to demand your best and all of that stuff, and you're expecting to work with you know some of the giant names in the bodybuilding industry hey i got big dreams i want to be mr olympia one day i want to compete in the arnold classic you know what i'll start and um i'll, I'll just go get one of them big names like george farrow or hanny rombot or chad nichols i'll get dave palumbo one of those guys to to help me they'll do my diet and Life will, life will be great after that. Charles Glass. They'll make me a champion. You got a sad thing coming. The, the idea of developing yourself and gaining mastery of these skills, you know, your discipline, time management, you know, um, those things are critical. Without those in place, even the, even the great supplement company with the great powerful supplement will be of little support to you without some basic fundamentals that are required of you to already have possession of. And that's the truth. No one should have to stand over you all day, every day. Did you eat? What time's your next meal? Hey man, are you on top of your schedule? Are you staying true to your, 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 your path? Because at the end of the day, it's just not that important to everybody else. And if it's more important to other people than it is you, then there's a large part of your better potential that will not be tapped. Now, funny thing about Tupperware, even if you get like really expensive Tupperware, one thing that I've learned is it always, give it enough time, it will always leak. 
something will happen. Whether it's the heat in the bag, the jolting, your bag got bumped when you put it in the trunk of your car, the thing got tipped upside down, the homeless man kicked you and knocked all over the platform on the train. The possibility is very large that it will always open. So, um, I put my stuff in garbage bags, tie my food up in the garbage bag before putting it in um, my bag. One, it'll help you be able to save a lot of the food bags you have. Um, I don't know if you've never done this before. What happens is with a food bag, food spills in them, sometimes condensation on the inside of the bag. They'll produce mold and they fall apart. It can become very not nice in there, particularly if you're not putting your stuff in garbage bags and plastic bags and trying to reinforce them to stop the seepage because eventually stuff just does seep, even the really, really, really good Tupperware. Armed with his nutrition for the day, we head out. When I was a kid, they used to tell you how to get in the elevator, you know, when to get on the elevator and when not to get on the elevator. You know, some people you're not supposed to get on the elevator with, you know, so you need to develop very quick. On Saturday afternoons in Brooklyn, an assortment of bodybuilders and figure competitors gather for a posing class. Ian Mercer was a bodybuilder in the 1960s and is now a legendary expert on the fine art of posing. His class is an exhausting two hours of nothing but turning, flexing, turning, and flexing. He runs his students through the mandatory poses again and again, preparing them for the judge's scrutiny. Ian walks the line like a drill sergeant, making minor and sometimes not so minor adjustments. Keep it tight, keep everything tight. Hold tight, hold it head up, open your shoulders. That's it, tighten that leg now. There we go, hold it tight. Coming down the line, hold, 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 hold it, set it, set it, lock it, hold. Hold, 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 tight, tight, kick it out. There we go. Hold tight, hold it, hold tight, hold it, spike it, pop it, pull it out. And conquer three. One. Among two, this group three, of hopefuls are those who have already competed in bodybuilding contests, standing alongside those who are anticipating stepping on stage for the first time. Also here most Saturdays is the two-time Arnold Classic winner and Mr. Olympia contender, Kai Green. How's it feel the second time around? I mean, the, the first, nothing can ever replace the first time as we all know. How's it now? That the what does it feel like? Time? It feels amazing. And I encourage anyone, anyone out there who ever had an idea a thought about something that they'd like to accomplish, or they'd like to, but it, but they know it would, it would demand the best of their efforts and the, the most of their concentration and, and everything that they had inside of them in order to get there and make it happen. I encourage you to do it. And when you do, 
then you'll know exactly how I feel, right? Very good. It would be tempting for a bodybuilder of Kai's stature to think that he has arrived and that he has learned all he needs to know about his sport. It's easy to let the accolades and the glare of the spotlight cause you to forget the work that has gotten you here and the work that yet needs to be done. Kai knows better. Those star moments that, you know, fill the highlight reels and, you know, leave an audience in awe to watch. Oh, wow, play that again. I want to see that. Those seconds are built on thousands and thousands and thousands of hours that a lot of people wouldn't think are worth, you know, adding to a highlight reel. Basic fundamentals being applied over and over and over and over again. Getting up a certain time, doing certain things, cooking your meals, going to, you know, do your cardio, walking through the disciplines, keeping the checklist, and staying on top of them. Those are the things that, you know, when you string them together, start to create a day of efficient action. The more likely you are to string those days of efficient action together, the more likely it will be that you can set up your own success. So far in this day in the life, Kai has done his cardio early in the morning, shopped for food, cooked and packed it. These are the building blocks of any successful bodybuilder's daily routine and cannot be skipped over or ignored. These fundamentals seem simple, and Kai can sound repetitive when asked to talk about it, but it is this relentless, repetitive simplicity which is the foundation of bodybuilding and can sometimes be its most difficult aspect. Some of Kai's duties that are not a part of the lives of most practicing bodybuilders at the amateur level are the obligations to his various sponsors. Personal appearances, guest posing, photo and video shoots like this one for the Train with Kai instructional series are all things that can interrupt the schedule of day-to-day -day activity. And yet, despite all of this, those fundamentals of bodybuilding must continue to take precedence. One of those fundamentals is posing, which brings us here to a Saturday afternoon posing class that Green attends once a week. Though this is not a daily thing, Kai feels that it is an indispensable part of his weekly routine. Everything tight, good, relax, catch yourself, take a deep breath. To me, posing is the end of all the hard work and all the dieting and everything. It is the, the work that you do to get your, your degree. I look at it like this, you're in school, training every day, you're in school, you're doing your work. Now you go to the show, that's your graduation ceremony. Your posing is your walk to get your diploma. Right, closer to your body. Right, hold tight, hold tight, lock it, pull it down, and set it. Let's go, right, all the way down and then set it. Hit it, come on. Even as a teenager, Kai was an excellent poser, breaking new ground by incorporating hip hop moves into his routine. In 2007, Kai exploded onto the scene with his now famous Dirty Diana routine and has since taken posing in a new direction. Some people love it, some people hate it, but no one can deny that Kai is anything but an expert. And yet he humbles himself once a week and continues to learn from his original teacher. Pull it back to me. Pull it Every now and then you need a tweak. See, bodybuilding is subjective. A good bodybuilder or a great bodybuilder would always look for what he can improve on. Nobody's perfect. You can always learn a little something. You might forget something. And somebody can see something that you forget and tell you, look, hey, you forget how to hit this. You gotta do it back then. And then you remember, oh yeah, I used, this is how I used to do it before. And you go back to old school and it works. Sit on their hips. Ready? Hands behind your head, abdominals and thighs, leg of your choice. Sit on that leg, sit back, crunch, and blow it out. Tighten your abs. Blow it out. Blow it out. Squeeze them quads. Crunch. Pull, hamstring. There we go. Hold the head up. Pull tight. Pull. Lift it up. There we go. Pull it. And then you set it. There we go. Pull it. Pull tight. Head up. Pull it. The most muscular, I gotta see every muscle squeeze. Legs, traps, chest, abs, 
Arms. Your quad is the most important thing here too. Tighten them up. Squeeze them. Hold tight. Hold tight. Good. Relax. Stand up. Thank you. Though Kai is naturally a shy person, he nevertheless spends some time as the center of attention once the session is over. He's used to it, of course, but he's always sure to maintain his eating schedule. The next stop in our day in the life is the gym. As we drive, the exhaustion of the bodybuilding lifestyle begins to show, and Kai quietly nods off. It's got to be tough moving 275 or more pounds of muscle around all day. And it's not over yet. Kai is very fortunate that by this point in his career, he can pick and choose where he trains. Most days, he works out at the mecca of bodybuilding on the East Coast, Powerhouse Gym. Run by husband and wife bodybuilding legends Bev Francis and Steve Weinberger, at Powerhouse Gym, you can never be sure which star of the sport you may run into. And fans of Kai know that he is always willing to take some time to say hello or take a picture. This gym has been the location of many now famous video and photo shoots over the years. Chances are, if the photos in a bodybuilding or fitness magazine article were shot on the East Coast, they were shot here. Although those kinds of pictures are beautiful and inspirational, and an example of the best that bodybuilding has to offer, they don't really reflect what life is like in the gym every day for someone like Kai Green. For one thing, he would never train shirtless, and in fact only reveals himself when urged to by a photographer. He always remains covered up and does not practice posing in the open areas of the gym. Many theories have been advanced to explain the reasons for Kai's ever-present hoodie, but it's really very simple and practical. Thermogenesis, that's my secret. <laughs> now, I just feel comfortable. In a, in a, I do sweat a lot, though, so it's a little bit more convenient than a t-shirt. If I had a t-shirt on, I'd have to be all over the place. I'd have to be wiping stuff down. I mean, a hoodie is more absorbent. On this particular day in the life, Kai begins his gym session not with cardio, but with a 12-minute warm-up for mind and body. He then performs a long and careful abdominal and stretching routine. His focus during this time is so strong that the photographer and I dare not interrupt him. Beginning with the documentary Overkill, I have made the observation many times that Kai seems like a monk. He lives a sparse ascetic existence by modern standards. His deep philosophizing, the extreme dedication to his goals, his discomfort in the spotlight, and the ever-present hood all add up to give him the aura of the holy man of bodybuilding. I'm not sure he sees himself that way, but it's hard not to make the comparison, especially today. You ever see like people chanting or Buddhists doing things with their breathing and using their breath to start to alter this, their mind state? I'm sure on some level, in some way, a simple 12 minutes or so before I get started on the floor training. This moment allows me the ability to kind of walk through some exercise like that. You're regulating your breathing or using it as a device to be able to suspend those thoughts with other things. I try to get focused on what I'm about to do, get it done, and then try to keep moving with the continuum of my day. As with the posing class, it is this kind of meticulous attention to detail that creates a champion. But Kai Green's life and mindset were not always so controlled and structured. Earlier in the day, we stopped at a diner. Kai ate his prepared food, of course, and he explained to us how bodybuilding provided a very necessary catharsis for a young man in a bad situation. Everything else was a mess. Outside of my life was a, was a mess. Socially inept, did not fit in, did not feel like he fit in. Anger management, getting into fights, raging against authority, not developing or cultivating relationships very well, insecure, just a whole lot of things going on. But in the gym, all of those things that were a weakness were a strength to me. I was able to summon a tremendous amount of intense energy um, just and be intense just allow myself to be intense about something 
It's like those other times when you're ready to explode and be angry and violent and ah, take it, Kept bottle it up. Now bring it into the gym here in this moment and release under under the weight. I think about being strong. Think about dominating. Think about overcoming. And as you're thinking that, you, you want to act it out. It just so happens that while you're acting it out, though, you're underneath that same weight that would have crushed you if you were thinking those weak thoughts. This thing is going to crush you. And then if, in another mindset, maybe it would have. But, you know, normal mindset of just being relaxed and sedate and without fight, yeah, it's going to crush me. But it, that moment you already explode, you took it, you put it in, you fouled it up, went to the gym, put you now underneath the squat rack, All right. in the bench press, under the iron, okay, and release. Oh. Man. Isn't your channeling anger, basically? Every tool will help you get where you're trying to go. Once you do, are clear about where you want to go. The picture that Kai paints of his young self contrasts greatly with the steady and thoughtful Kai we see today. And I get the feeling that he wants to spread the word to other young people about the benefits not only of weight training, but of mind training as well. That's critical thinking skills that you're going to need more refined and developed as a man 10, 15 years down the line in ways that you do not see right now. Another reality of the bodybuilding day in the life is that every day is not always a heavy day. Today, Kai concentrates on what are called the finishing exercises, in this case, the calves and forearms. This is necessary in order to create and perfect a balanced overall look. Other days, Kai lifts heavier. And in our final segment, we will see a Kai Green leg workout that for me redefined the word hardcore. It doesn't matter where you're at at the time that you dare to dream, and it doesn't matter where you've been. Now, six, let's go. Just keep dreaming and keep working. Nine, yep, let's go, let's go. 10, drive. And the better picture that you're looking to create for yourself, it can be attained. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Now, 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 go. 12. I grew up as a kid uh, looking to the stars. Not necessarily did I understand that that information was going through a filter. When I see the photos, all I see is these photos believing that this is my opportunity to look over the shoulder of the star, you know, in the trenches and see what they do. Not realizing that this is now already gone through a filter and the filter has been touched by the expectation or the highly idealized vision of what an editor or a person who'd been delegated the responsibility to get the great photo and have the great shoot thought would be important um, and realize how that influences what I saw. You know, if the great photo shoot and the great photos in their mind was represented by hoisting these huge poundages, looking incredibly veiny and, and, and you know, over the top, exaggerated, muscular, in great condition. The message I got was that they look like this all year round, and this is what it looks like in the trenches when he goes to the gym in his neighborhood, in his location, and just goes and works out. I don't recognize that it's him on location 
with the great lighting, with the great coming through this filter. I couldn't see, I couldn't recognize the filter. So in short, I would be influenced to think the same way. Every day is a sunny day. Every day the athlete's in shape and looking like he just tore out of a Flex magazine, you know. And every day, um, you know, he's hoisting these huge poundages. And if I am going to aspire to look and be like that, then every day for me has to be that. Not realizing that every day for even the subject is not that. And it could not be that and be still realistically possible for him to be the star that he is. Night is descending on Brooklyn and it's time to do legs. When we began this day in the life video and photo shoot, Kai asked us what we would like to see when we got to the gym expecting that we would want him to do a workout specifically for the camera. I told him, I don't want you to do anything special at all. In fact, I want you to ignore me completely. I want to show exactly what a real day in the life workout is like for Kai Green a little over two months before the Olympia. In keeping with the theme of this series, we went to a gym near the projects that Kai has trained in throughout his career. We were joined there by his current training partner, Julian Mundell, an aspiring natural bodybuilder whom Kai met after going to one of Ian's posing classes. For this shoot, I brought nothing but myself and my camera. No assistance, no lights. I gave them no direction and asked that nothing be done for the camera. What follows is as real a workout with a top tier bodybuilding pro as you will ever see on tape. But it is not bombastic, not loud. There is very little screaming and yelling, except when absolutely necessary, and the weights used will not blow your mind. Instead, what I witnessed this day is a very precise and scientific leg routine, which nevertheless is incredibly difficult, and which I defy anyone to match rep for rep. I will outline the workout as we go along, so that if anyone is inclined to, they can try it out for themselves. But the point is, is that what is commonly passed off in the bodybuilding world as hardcore is simply performing for the camera. Don't misunderstand me. I'm not doubting that athletes like Branch Warren or Dana Lynn Bailey are sincere when they train on film. For many, a high energy level in the gym is a necessary component of their workout routine. I'm just saying that in my experience, I haven't seen it that way. The athletes I have worked with have been for the most part quiet, thoughtful men and women, even when training very hard. I think there is a misconception about what it means to be hardcore when it comes to bodybuilding. All too often, that term is used for displays that could be better described as ego lifting. Sometimes that can be inspiring, but it can be off-putting and misleading as well. There's a lot to be said for, you know, seeing a person work at something. And when you work at something, honestly, you know, when people see that and they can see that it's just pure honesty behind it, there's... There's something about that that people can get behind and support. Real people that are buying the magazines and stuff, when they see open the pages of the magazine, see Ronnie Coleman, that's a, a lifestyle that's separate and apart for me. So we look at that and we think that's the only way it is. But in truth, you can do it wherever you are if you just really want to get it done. So recognizing the filter, I think, helps me now make a lot more sense of this journey and why it's important for me to turn around and say to the younger f aspiring stars out there, hey, dude, you know, get your form right, learn how to feel, think about your mind. Your mind is driving this whole thing. In the past, Kai has worked one-on-one -on -one very closely with his trainers. Lately, he has found that less necessary and instead has begun to mentor other promising bodybuilders. Julian herself has undergone a startling transformation and is now taking it to the next level, preparing for her first bodybuilding show. She has been very fortunate to have found Kai to guide her, and Kai obviously sees something in her which he finds inspiring. She's untapped potential, very, very well, natural. We went from living almost sedentary 
to just deciding, hey, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start exercising and just really started acting like it was an addiction. Became unsettled and didn't, wouldn't allow herself to accept anything else but that. Almost to a point of becoming neurotic, you know, and appearing kind of weird to her friends, but to people that knew her before. I wanted to look good. I wanted to be the it girl. I wanted to be able to put on a bikini and feel good. And, 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 and that's what made me do it. Kai's the best, man. He, he takes time to teach people. I'm used to going to the gym and, you know, I'm doing bicep curls with 45 pounds. And when I met Kai, and I, I, I've never done more than 10 reps, never. When I met Kai and he said 20 reps, everything 20 reps. It made me think, can I, can I do 20 reps? And he said, it's not about the weights. You know, what is it, what is it that, that other people have that other people seemingly don't? You know, what, what is that? And then you see someone that just, hey man, every time you see them, they're lost in the work. Him and they can barely say hello to you because they, they just, they're focused, they're getting into it. You know, okay? Nothing goes by. Next thing you know, they're reaping results like, wow, what? Hey, excuse me, what, what did you do? They become the people you want to talk to. You almost want to engage them in a conversation in the locker room, thinking that somehow it's going to unearth for you the secret. What, 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 what the hell is that, you know? And I'm convinced, you know, seeing people like that, that's, that's what it is. You know, I want this so bad that I'm going to do everything I can do all day, you know, to get closer and closer to making that dream a reality. Not everybody that says it with their mouth is really, really going to say it with their action. You know, saying it with your mouth versus saying it with your actions are two very different things. Very, very different things. And when you say it with your with your with your actions, I'm giving everything I have to this thing. That to say it passionately is with your mouth is it may feel really good at the time. I think this is therapy for a lot of people more than more than most will say. I feel good. It just feel good to know that I did this. You know, I, there is no easy way. There is no quick fix. You know, and, and a lot of people need to know that. And I'm, I'm not going to stop. I will be the best one day. I will be. And I'm not gonna stop here. I'm not. Julian's determination is admirable, and she's going to need plenty of it to get through this workout tonight. They move back upstairs for more of the workout. Kai insists on perfect form, complete extension, and complete contraction of the target muscle with every rep of every exercise. There will be no ego lifting here tonight. The weights used are not what is important. Julian begins to falter a bit during six rounds of leg extensions, but she doesn't quit, and the hardest part is yet to come. The final exercise tonight is, of course, squats. But by now, the athlete's muscles have been so taxed that there will be no need to load up the bar with photographically impressive weights. To their already tired legs, even a few plates will feel like a ton. 
This is where the mythology of the glistening, screaming athlete in the glossy photo shoot really crumbles and comes crashing down. Let's go. Let's go. 17. 19. Let's go. 20. Beautiful. Beautiful. Those photographs of Kai for which he has now become famous don't even come close to the daily reality that I am witnessing here. This is a slow, methodical, precise, thoughtful, civilized workout by a modern master of muscle building. Not a crazed, animalistic iron orgy. More than try to impress you with the thought of, wow, how much, well, how much weight is he moving? Or, uh, wow, how much cardio is that? Or, I want you to walk away with the thought that, hey man, all of those things are built on basic fundamentals and regardless of whether or not you have access at this time or not to you know bright lights fancy cars whether or not you even have people ready to film you today you know if you work hard and you use these fundamentals with the intent to humble yourself before the discipline you do it long enough you too can find yourself in the same position, you know. Success is something that you can't attain, and it doesn't have to be thought to be something so foreign. I never talk about genetics, you know. Nothing in this day is built around the wonder or not of, of Kai Greene's genetics. It's built around the specifics of doing certain things every day. And even when it gets difficult, if you believe that you can be successful at, at, at doing it, you have a purpose for getting these things done, then success can follow. All right, let's go. Let's go. Three. Let's go. Six. Let's go. Seven. Yep. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go.
You can't aspire to win the show and if you just see the show as the show that day, something separate and apart from the little each day and the little things that you do in the totality of that day that add up to an efficient day of efficient action. And stringing more days of efficient action together, ultimately you can produce the end result that you're looking for. And this is not believing in some spiritual hocus pocus and mumbo jumbo that is nonsense. No, this is recognizing the power you have in your own hand with the decisions that you make each day. You know, you work, you work, and you work, and you're committed to something, and at times you don't even know what the hell you're committed to. It's just, it's just therapy. It's something to do that it's different from, you know, just being lost in your own not-so-nice thoughts. And it's an opportunity to think about something a lot nicer or to do something that's with more purpose than... So you do it, and you, 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 you take your passion, and you, you, put, you put a lot into it. And at some point, you get, a, you get recognized for it. But with the recognition doesn't mean that the man is not with his own demons or without, without, his, own, um, without his own struggles. You know, do not, if you're, if you're a beginner bodybuilder, please do not take for granted that you can just leave the house with one meal and I'll get another, another meal as I need while I'm out there because, yeah, I can just stop here, I can stop there, I can get, I can get, no, because in truth, you're a beginner bodybuilder. You're not, you're not a seasoned veteran. So there's certain, um, there's certain things you can't get away with because you have not developed the discipline and the strength of character yet that are necessary. Those are skills, those are tools that are necessary to be, that have to be developed. They're not, well, yeah, shortcut methods. Mm -mm. You have to, I believe the beginner bodybuilder has to go through the process of cooking his meals, each one of them, cook all of them, pack them up in a Tupperware, take them with you, go through the process of having them, opening them up, eating them. It's a little bit more difficult with each one because each one has been in Tupperware longer. So it becomes more of a testament to how bad do you want it? What is your commitment? Where do you, you know, where is your true desire? I have, I have, I have a friend that, you know, has wanted to do a bodybuilding show, for, has been talking about doing a bodybuilding show for 15 years now, you know. And I'm convinced that the reason why he hasn't is because he's holding himself back. Why is he holding himself back? Because he doesn't. Yeah, straight. He um, he'll start his diet. He get excited about it. He won't cook his food though. Every time I see him, he has no food with him. Yeah. And then he'll go and get a roti, which is a traditional West Indian style uh, food prepared at a you know, local West Indian style eatery, <laughs> you know, um, and then, you know, like I said, three weeks, two weeks is going by, still not on his diet, yo, hey, man, what happened to your diet? Well, you know, and I'm convinced that that is what happens. It's one thing to philosophize about training strategies and to, you know, uh, compare this philosophy versus another, you know, argue about, you know, how many grams versus how many grams is, is, but then there's something to be said for doing the damn thing, you know, just, just do it. You know, stop talking, stop trying to sound smart. You, know, you meet these people that want to engage you in these conversations and one-up the professional bodybuilder. Ah, you know more about nutrition. I even do. I mean, I'm not straight. I'm not where I'm at because, because I know more about nutrition than everybody else on the planet, you know. 
Um, in fact, I dare say that the the top bodybuilding athletes that are on stage are not the men on stage. You can make it right here because they know more about training science and nutrition than the than the average person sitting in the audience. A lot of times, the difference between the person in the audience and the person that's on stage doing it is the use of the knowledge. So success is not based on genetics. It's not based on how nice this car is. It's not based on how pretty my face is, how small my nose may need to look, or you know whether or not I'm the right complexion. I have an eight inch scar down the side of my face, but I have a camera in front of me <laughs> more often than not. <laughs> Which just means that, you know, if you work hard and your work is recognized, you know, the sky's the limit. So for all those people out there that think they're ugly and everything, I'm going to hold it down for you. But more importantly, you know, you can still be a success. And for all those people that think, well, I'm too short, well, I'm going to hold it down for you. And more importantly, you can still be a success. Find the things that are that you're excited about and that you can give your all and you can work really hard towards attaining it. String those days of efficiency, efficient action together and success can happen even for you.